Well, hello there. I'm at Supercompute in St. Louis, and I'm in the Supermicro booth, and Supermicro has a lot of fun, exciting things. But Supercompute is about supercomputing. They're actually spinning up a Beowulf cluster because this is the first day, and everybody is sort of tired from having to get here. But it's Supercompute 2025 in St. Louis. There's a lot to talk about. Phil, you know all the things. You've had all the customer experiences. Yeah. It's been a year. Can you believe it's been a year? Can't believe it's been a year already. <laughs> yeah, time really flies. Yeah. How's that uh, yearly product cadence treating you? Um, it's interesting. It keeps us busy, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that in terms of um, the launches this year, there's definitely some interesting um, happenings, especially with networking. Uh, we're seeing that transition from uh, 400G to 800G for the compute fabric. Um, so you'll see that present in some of the, uh, the AI optimized um, solutions that we have. So here. 800 gigabit per fiber optic link, and yeah. you guys are just casually shipping that to customers in volume. We're starting to um, with uh, the NVIDIA Blackwell uh, architecture platform. Um, we're in that stage of going from that transition from uh, the B200 generation to the B300 generation. So you'll see that integration of the ConnectX 8 NICs onto the GPU baseboard uh, to bypass, bypass the limitations of the PCIe bus. Yeah. So um, now that's, one, that's of the one of the things that comes to mind, I guess. Yeah, that's one of the things you guys are showing here at the show. Yeah. So with ConnectX, the, the networking and the PCIe fabric have sort of merged together that is actually running at PCIe Gen 6. We first saw a little mm -hmm. preview of that at Computex 2025. But it's shipping in volume. It's it's part of the Blackwell experience, let's yeah, call it. Yeah, we have the, our, some of our systems over there. There are some really important things I want you to understand about how the components fit together from NVIDIA and Supermicro from the perspective of students, researchers, Nobel Prize winners, and the true scientists that are here at Supercompute 25. For now, I want to introduce you to some of the high-level components with the capabilities of these systems and what I saw at Supercompute. But I've also got separate deep-dive videos on each of these topics coming up. I'm going to first introduce you to the AI factory from NVIDIA and Supermicro. The key component of that is the GB300 NVL72. That's the most standardized component of the AI factory, and it's this full rack. But understand that the AI factory is also meant to imply an unprecedented level of turnkey software standardization, too. The monster. I like to call it the mainframe of AI. <laughs> it really is. This is a mainframe. This is GB300 NVL72. That's right. 72 GPUs. 72 GPUs, 18... In one rack. That's right. 18 compute trays, 72 GPUs, 142 kilowatt. That's more than most North American houses <laughs> by a lot. Like a 2x, 3x maybe. That is a lot. When we talk about scaling AI, we talk about scaling up and scaling out. This rack, this GP300 in VL72, is the pinnacle of scale up. For scale out, well, you just add more racks and you add capacity. But Part of the story here is also the new number formats and new software enablement that the, you know, is coming with the AI factory innovation and, and, and AI innovations from NVIDIA. One of the new ones with Blackwell is NVFP4. It's a 4-bit format that is about, you know, it's a 1% loss in accuracy versus FP8, but that gives you, you know, up to double the throughput versus uh, an 8-bit format, down, you know, all the way from FP64 for the uh, formats that original research scientists used. So how much NVFP4 are we talking about here? Oh my god, this is uh, <laughs> t 20 multiply 72. <laughs> 20 times 72 that our helpful editor has put on screen that is a much larger number than the other numbers we were talking about. As you can tell. <laughs> we're good in math. <laughs> but this is what you're doing if you're training. This is what you're doing if you're at the frontier of AI. Exactly. This one rack is one building block of the AI factory. Exactly. Supermicro is the factory for the AI factory, making the components the AI factory needs. Exactly. You have the cooling distribution in the bottom, and then power, the networking is in the middle, and the reason the networking is in the middle is because the speed of light is kind of a bit, and it makes more sense for the signals to be the same length physically because the signaling rate is so high, the speed of electrons through copper, basically the speed of light, uh, matters. And that's why it has to be in the middle, which is insane. And then there's DGX Station GB300. This is, I think, the single machine with HBM3 and LPDDR5 in a unified memory space that everyone is gonna be super excited about with availability coming up soon in December. 
Flying under everybody's radar with that though is Super Micro has a GB200 based station like machine set up like this that they call the Super HPC station. It's really a developer kit aimed at research scientists looking for the maximum floating point 64 performance that the GB200 offers. Hi, I'm Sean. Uh, I'm from the uh, MP department, which stands for multiprocessor. I'm a solution manager and a product manager as well. And this is GB300 station. I think this is what a lot of folks that got, you know, you're looking at DGX Spark and it's like, I need some, why doesn't this have more horsepower? Here it is. This yeah. is it. This is what you wanted. Yeah. This is 288 gigs of HBM3. Yep. This is the newest, obviously newer stuff, okay, in the market. And then uh, we are the exclusive manufacturer for this, for GB300 station. And yes, as you can see from here, and then we have, it's a uh, NVIDIA Grace, super cheap. We've black wheel GPU. Yeah. So all in one and the main selling point of this, this is liquid cool. So close loop liquid cool. So basically you don't really have to refill that liquid anymore, right? But so but of course you will disappear a little bit but it's a close loop. So also it's a sixteen hundred watt power supply and it's an on prem solution. Yeah. So what that means is some of the uh, maybe uh, financial institutions or education institutions or whatever government agencies, they prefer on-prem, they prefer not to put their data in the cloud. They want to train the AI inferencing on-prem. So this will be a good solution to them, good solution for them. So yeah, obviously this is uh, uh, the newer stuff and you will be available December. So very close to general availability. It's basically shipping at that point. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a platform that has normal PCIe slots and M.2 and looks like just a really high-end ATX motherboard in a more or less normal looking liquid cooling is pretty awesome standard case. And so it's really exciting that it's 20 petaflops of NVFP4. But, but you've also got the GB200 version of that, which is 18 petaflops? 18 petaflops. We will have two versions for this uh, station. The GB200 for HPC, because B200 is a better uh, accelerator for uh, FP64. I will say it is because FP64 is amazing, and GB200 has still got it where it counts in FP64. But GB300 supports a lot of new modern formats that are there. They're getting wild and crazy on this frontier with AI. So horses for courses. All right, let's take a look at the RTX Pro sy systems and see how they stack up computationally. Two GPUs per server to eight GPUs per server. These are rack scale and configured with every option that you'd expect and be looking for in, in you know, more normal rack mount configurations. RTX Pro 6000. This is familiar to me. I, I recognize this because these are PCIe cards. 600 watts. That's right. And each one of these, 3.6, 3.7. 7 petaflop FP, FP4. So we got eight of them. It's like 32 on a good day, petaflops in our air-cooled configuration here. Plus we got Bluefield for the interface and everything else. Yes. That is, that's uh, pretty substantial. Yes. So we've seen previously the AI development platforms in HPC. This is more for enterprise AI, right? So it's rack mount, 5U, or 4U, or 3U, or 2U, enterprise AI platforms. They come in different t-shirt sizes, two GPUs, four GPUs, eight GPUs platform. Uh, this guy actually can handle up to eight full height, full length GPUs. And you get all of the uh, advanced features that you have from having that many GPUs. It unlocks a whole world of possibilities in terms of like encoders, multi-instance GPUs, some other things like that that you might not get on DGX Station, but still 768 gigs of GDDR7 versus 768 gigs that's a mix of HBM3 and LPDDR5. That's right, 96 gigs uh, per GPU. The only thing you don't have here is NVLink, the GPU to GPU and TechConnect. It's just PCIe Gen 5. Yep, direct uh, attached to the CPUs, dual socket, Intel or AMD. Nice. Okay, what about B300? B300 is there. <laughs> oh, okay. Not every organization is ready to adopt NVIDIA's grace for their CPU needs, or there's a need to stay in the x86 compute ecosystem. No problem. That's what the B300 platform is for. GB300, Grace Blackwell, B300, Blackwell. And that's available in less dense air or super dense liquid configurations. Well, they're, they're all the same. I, I'm not seeing the, oh, water and liquid, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So we got B300, the developers can't see the difference between air and liquid, but uh, what are we looking at for NV FP4 here? Uh, same thing, uh, per B300 chip, uh, 20 petaflops NV FP4, and you got eight of them. This is, th these three systems are HGXs, so eight GPU each. This is the A2 air-cooled with either Intel or AMD front I.O., eight Connectix 8s, each one with 100, 800 gigabit per second, so there's eight ports here. This guy is the liquid-cooled version of this guy, so this is a 4U front I.O., AGX, B300 as well, and Supermicro figured out a way to downsize this guy into only a 2OU. Please notice this is for 2OU, it's for so this is for OCP, RAX, or V3. It's pretty amazing. Now, even though this is roughly the same in the FP4, the difference here is that every GPU can talk to every other GPU at more than twice the speed. That's really the difference. So if we're running like a 500 billion parameter model, I'm gonna, as a developer, I'm gonna have a much better experience on this than I will on the other platform because scaling across multiple GPUs. But if I'm doing agentic AI and I'm deploying a solution where I've got you know, a whole fleet of smaller AIs running together, it'll run great on the other platform. You really don't need this platform to just do that kind of thing. That's right. So that's the quick tour of what Supermicro and NVIDIA were showing here at Supercompute. And trust me, we've barely scratched the surface. If you're watching this and feeling a little conflicted about AI, I get it. A lot of what shows up online right now is noise, slop shortcuts and half-baked automation misapplied to human work. But Supercompute is about researchers, PhDs, student teams, Nobel laureates. I think there was even a couple Nobel Prize winners walking around here. People who care about accuracy, rigor, simulation, and compute as a tool for discovery. For them, AI isn't overshadowing high-performance compute, it's fueling their ability to do more science and faster. Anyone in these halls will happily take another rack because these are our best and brightest, to which we should entrust all this compute for the good of humanity. These folks, above all else, is where I want to see the AI factory tokens spent. Sure, hardware is a big part of that, racks like the GB300 NVL72 are jaw-dropping pieces of engineering, but the most important part of the factory is the standard. A repeatable, validated, production-grade software stack. The same precision you see in the plumbing, networking, and NVLink fabric is mirrored in the software. The CUDA, the math kernel libraries, the new number formats, run.ai, the scheduling layer, the orchestration layer, more, even more. All of it is designed with the promise that not just teams are more productive immediately, but that their ideas scale from the Spark to the Station to the RTX Pro, all the way up to the GB300 NVL72 effortlessly. That's the promise. So we need to talk about that more. And I've got three more videos coming you're going to want to watch out for. First, we're going to do a full deep dive on the GB300 NVL72. Why it's the canonical building block of the modern AI factory, the GPU fabric is already operating at PCIe Gen 6, and why this architecture becomes an enabler for whatever comes next. Vera Rubin, Grace Next, Quantum Networking, you name it. Then we're doing a focused look at the B300. This platform is likely ideal as a transitional platform for many organizations. It can operate in both air-cooled and liquid-ready data centers. Same PCIe Gen 6 fabric, same Blackwell acceleration, but with x86 CPUs instead of Grace, and it's designed to slot into the data centers that exist as they are today. And finally, the on-ramps to the token factory, RTX Pro 6000 GPU servers, and even DGX Station. These systems are accessible and scalable and run many HPC workloads and give you a seat at the frontier. Plus, I'll be covering more from the show floor, student competitions, academic research, and the teams that are building the next era of high-performance compute. Supercompute is always a reminder that this isn't just about AI models and however those can be commercially exploited. It's about the people using the compute to understand the world and make it a better place. So stick around, the deep dives are coming, and the AI factory story is just getting started.